France's Day 838 of the unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine and the previous week was rich with events. Globally, long-awaited military supplies delivered to Ukraine brought their first results, which could be truly a game-changer, but let's not celebrate yet. According to different experts, including the Institute for Study of War and the Institute for Strategic Studies, the Russian troops are losing momentum in Kharkiv, and at this point the dynamics of the Russian losses is among the highest uh, since the beginning of the invasion of Ukraine. More than a thousand invaders become good on a daily basis due to the international support and the Ukrainian resilience. Uh, of course, Russia possesses a lot of human resources, but at the same time, uh, they've already lost insane amount of vehicles. And uh, it turns out that you cannot uh, fight modern war using only human resources. Uh, can Russian industry fulfill the demand of the front? Well, it depends, because Russia, of course, can invest enormous resources in weapons like missiles, uh, strike drones, uh, gliding bombs, let alone artillery shells and rockets. Undoubtedly, they can inflict massive damage and kill plenty of people in Ukraine, which they do on a daily basis, but uh, without enough vehicles to support assault operations, deliver and deploy troops, it will be much harder to um, take control of a town unless it's a completely destroyed town and uh, its infrastructure uh, its resources cannot be utilized. And, uh, for example, like it happened in Mariupol, Bakhmut, Avdiivka, and other places destroyed and captured by the Russian terrorists. So can Russian war industry produce enough vehicles to cover the needs of the Russian terrorist troops? Of course, looking at Russia, you may think that it's incredibly powerful and economically strong, but uh, its annual GDP is smaller than that of Italy. And last week, significant strikes were conducted uh, against Russian military bases. In one particular case, the Russian air base in Mosdok was hit with long-range strike drones. Uh, the Mosdok air base uh, houses Russian strategic aviation used to attack Ukrainian energy infrastructure with cruise missiles. It's hard to talk about the results of this particular strike because Russian media, as always, don't provide uh, credible coverage. In some cases, they talk about one intercepted Ukrainian drone, in other cases, as much as three. However, we know enough details about the Akhtubinsk strike, which destroyed a Russian super modern advanced Su-57 jet fighter, which Russians only had uh, six or seven in their possession. Uh, not mentioned Russian habit of snatching designs and solutions, of course, made by other countries, but this this strike proved to be successful and, according to numerous reports from the Russian sources, it was the first time Russia had lost such an aircraft. Again, the generals attempted to produce photoshopped fakes, claiming that the attack wasn't successful, but the results of this attack uh, were confirmed by one of the Russian military bloggers, Fighter Bomber. There's uh, good and bad news here. The good news is that the jet fighter is actually damaged, and the bad news is that Fighter Bomber is still alive. Uh, we all expected that uh, he died on board of the Russian AWAX aircraft destroyed uh, this year over the Azov Sea, but uh, unfortunately it's not so. Nonetheless, I can clearly see that the tide is changing and despite uh, losing numerous men and majority of Ukrainian power plants due to the pro-Russian assets on the West, Ukraine keeps fighting and speaking of the pro-Russian assets, of course current situation doesn't satisfy Putin. Therefore, we can observe enormous activity among the pro-Russian supporters and people we call useful idiots, uh, not only on the social media, but also in general press. Uh, for instance, uh, in her recent interview, Austrian Defense Minister Claudia Tanner stated that by helping Ukraine strike Russia's military objects on its own territory, uh, the West is crossing the red lines. To people like Frau Tanner, apparently only Russia has right to cross red lines and attack independent uh, democratic countries with long-range missiles. But, of course, uh, the problem is a bit deeper. Uh, Anders Puck Nielsen explains it in his new video 
on the so-called escalation management, which is basically a policy of the United States administration that is both uh, concerned about not letting Russia win the war and uh, uh, continue its hybrid aggression against the Baltic countries, Germany and the United States as well. Uh, but uh, at the same time, time the united states as well as nato realized that when ukraine has too much uh, success defending against russia this may lead to escalation uh, please check out andrew's brilliant video i uh, think it's spot on and i think it's a good explanation on why we should be more careful when celebrating the tides changing in favor of ukraine on the battlefield because unfortunately among western countries there's still no a clear vision on how the Ukrainian victory should look like, even though for us Ukrainians it's clear it's returning Ukrainian territories and making Russia lose the war, uh, like in Afghanistan, for example. And tonight on my stream, we will uh, dissect some of the most interesting degenerates and supporters of the Russian terrorism in the social media. With that, my friends, I wish you a beautiful day. I'm Operator Starsky. As always, be safe.